Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Hope everyone is well. Um, let me start off with a purpose statement. Uh, the primary objective of the CAC is to ensure capital maintenance and public transportation projects and programs approved by the voters in November 2nd, 2004, November 6th, 2012, and November 7th, 2017 ballot measures are accomplished with RTA funds. The committee reports directly to the PPRTA Board of Directors. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we have a quorum, and all alternate members can vote. So I'll get that out of the way. Do I hear a motion for approval of the agenda as presented? Tom? So, so move, and Larry second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, any public comments for items not on the agenda from the committee members? Seeing none, anyone in the audience? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> approval of the minutes from the January 2nd regular meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? Larry, thank you. Second. Uh, Joan, second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Financial reports. Ms. Bev. Good afternoon. Um, at your desk were the additional pages six through nine because I didn't put them in with the packet. I had a senior moment. The board doesn't get those because they don't really want them. And so when I handed this packet to Rick, I was thinking about the board. And Anyway, sorry about that. But for November, we re finally received the November sales and use tax figures of 8433000 So we were 338000 above the monthly budget, which puts us at 4132000 above the annual budget year to date. We still have December's numbers to come in, and hopefully we'll have a lot over budget for that month, but you never really know. Um, the... Interest income in excess of the budget is added to the amount of sales and use tax above the budget to do the calculation for the carryover and for the I-25 gap $5 million contributions. So we'll be adding 1600000 almost 71000 to whatever our final figure is for... Um, the sales and use tax over budget. So I just wanted to let you know at least we have that positive there. So that was interest income? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions about any of the other pages. Everything's within budget, so no news is good news there. Good news is we're finally wrapping up some of these RTA-1 projects. Yes, it is good. Any questions for Bev on financials? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, item number six, 2019 capital maintenance and public transportation contracts. Mike Chavez, City of Colorado Spring. Good afternoon. <laughs> Members of the board, uh, board our CAC actually. Uh, Mike Chavez, City Engineering. I've got uh, two items for your review and then an informational one on the list today. The first one is um, requesting using uh, our uh, bridge maintenance funds to reline two 11 foot CMP pipes that go under Dublin. And we're working with uh, our stormwater enterprise. They're building the detention pond, water quality pond upstream of there. And the outfall is these two pipes, and they're old and rusted, and we want to just uh, rehab them so they hold up. Um, I think there's a, that lining's got like a 75-year life projection. The uh, next one is uh, we're asking authorization to start using our team money on the Platte Avenue Bridge or Sand Creek replacement. We're... Uh, Replacing those we've got that project's basically split half with grant and RTA money and when we um, originally uh, Started the design contract with HDR. We just had grant money in the uh, memo that came to the board. So we're requesting um, 
$770,000 to be used to finish final design and also to uh, to do the CM. Uh, we haven't we haven't issued the CM modification yet, but we will uh, probably this summer when we get to construction. <clears throat> I've got a question on that one in here. The bottom of the front page, the front page that you break break down the cost uh, in the wording, it says something about city match. Where is the city match in those calculations? There. Um, I think we've used it in the des in the original design, but there was like three hundred thousand that we put in uh, for a, a city match or overmatch, and it's um, I think we used it. We, we've used it in when we uh, the grant the grant is a one point three, but then there was another uh, three hundred thousand, and I'm not sure if that was match for the grant or just overmatch. But there was three hundred thousand dollars in city match that we had in. In the budget. Okay, thank you. And then the uh, last item is an update. We had talked, uh, or last year we had board approval to kind of uh, have a a priority on how we're going to spend the RTA one funds on Mark Shuffle. And the bridge over Sand Creek was like the uh, the main priority that came about. So, what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, authorization for a little bit of over five hundred thousand dollars, so we can finish the design, um, and also be able to get a construction management services uh, on board when we go to construction. We're looking at doing it this summer, and then we're also looking for a hundred thousand dollars for that wetland bank credit. Uh, Jennifer talked about that last month that it's just cheaper to go use that source rather than try to find an area near the site and buy it and maintain it and establish it. So this is an informational one? Yes. We will actually, well, the uh, the uh, task orders will be on the change order law because oh, okay. they're under 200000 but we just want we just want to let you know kind of how we're looking at spending that money. Sorry. Mr. Godfrey, you guys question over here? Yeah, go ahead. Um, on this Platte um, Avenue bridge, uh, you indicated in here you're going to be putting a, a light control intersection in there. And I'm wondering why that would be necessary with because that's a right in and a right out intersection at the bridge and you're less than you're less than a half a mile from the powers and plat interchange. There is plans to bring um, uh, the road to the south. Uh, right now, I, I forget the name of it, but it, it, it has space development and drive. space. Yes, and then and then the south. There's a road. Uh, it's not real Vista. It's right there Tro by the Troy Hill. But anyway, the, the yeah. plan is to bring that up uh, at to line up with Space Center, and it would become a full movement intersection to accommodate because there's limited access off of Powers. Right. And plat. So as that area develops, uh, they're going to bring, uh, I think it's Troy Hill, up to plat, and that's the reason for the signalization. So that's part of that pro. That's part of that program with Pikes Peak and uh, realignment the bridges down there that they're planning on putting in. Uh, you mean uh, an airport? Uh, no, it's yeah between there and the airport uh, down. Uh, with a cloud, that cloud property? Yeah, yes, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Scott. Um, Mike, how is the cost split between PPRTA and the Stormwater Enterprise determined on that first project? Uh, basically, the uh, the rehab of the pipes is RTA maintenance, and then the rest of it's for the actual pond. Okay, thank you. Carlos? Uh, yeah, just uh, just clarification going that first one, the, the Rangewood tributary. You may just put a note that that's the Rangewood tributary to the Cottonwood Creek drainage. So it doesn't say anything in there to where it goes. Okay. It just says 
range wood. I'm, I'm familiar with that from the being a user of the Cottonwood Creek Trail there. Oh. I did have a question, though, on the uh, Sand Creek Bridge replacement. Mm -hmm. um, is there, uh, can you again walk, walk through is specifically what is being requested here? Uh, is there a second modification uh, change order number two, or is that, uh, is that a no-cost change order? I, I don't understand. What so right now we've had, we have two basic uh, task orders for CPNY. One was for the initial study and then preliminary for 200000 each. And what we're looking at is we're going to need $200,000 for the final design, uh, 36000 for the waterline design, which CSU will reimburse, and then uh, in anticipation of the construction, we're looking at about $200,000 for CM services and then about $100,000 for the wetland bank credit. So all that is about $536,000. Now, now I was referring to the, are we talking about the Sand, Sand Creek over um, Platt, Platt Oh, Avenue? you're talking. Yeah, there's three items here. Uh, the second, item number two, the uh, Platt Avenue bridge over Sand Creek. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, what, yeah, what? I apologize. There's a couple of bridges. I know there's two bridges right. here. I was referring to the, uh, the Platt, Platt Avenue, okay. Sand Creek, uh, not the uh, Rangewood tributary uh, in Dublin. So what we're looking for is authorization for the 770000 uh based on uh, our anticipated cost to go through the final design. And when you take out what grant funding uh, is available or has been used, that leaves a balance of $700,000. But that, that would be a shortfall, not a contract modification, correct? Uh, I understand it. It's a, ta it's a task order? Um, well, it, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a task. Well, task it'll be a modification, modification, one, for 32000 and then we'll have to, uh, the construction engineer services will actually have to bring that to the board as an approval because it's over our task order limit. So you're first getting approval, and then you'll bring the money. Yeah, we just want to know here's you know here's the bulk of the money that we're thinking of needing because uh, the uh, the contract that we brought originally had no RT money in it, so we're just trying to get, get it authorized so we can use it. So so it's a pre-authorization for yes. um, so so again, what is modification two? Um, is it just amending the scope and fee? It doesn't look as though there's any amendment to the scope. Um, you're just trying to cover a shortfall. I, I'm not sure I understand how a uh, modification well, here is driving up or increasing the cost. It seems like the cost is there, and you're just looking for pre-approval for a shortfall. Um, well, not um, based on just adding everything up from that. Well, we we were short. Uh, we issued a contract for 1.6, but only had 1.4 million of grant money. So there was that little shortfall to cover that the design contract. And then we're also getting pre-approval for the engineering services of half a million. And like I said, that'll come as an actual modification when we actually execute it, uh, probably closer to the summer. Do you see why, why it's a little maybe not laid out very clearly as to what the modification is? It's asking for $744,000, which just happens to be the same as the shortfall. Just they happen to be the same. Is it? It's not, it's not a coincidence. Uh, you, you need to cover the shortfall, and you need to do uh, a contract modification for additional Well, what I'm trying to do is covering the, the shortfall and our anticipated half million dollars. So I just I lumped them together to get, to get an aggregate number of what we think we're going to need. We're, sh we're short about 300000 uh, right now because we had a $1.6 you know, $1 million design contract and there's only 1.398. So that 777 includes that shortfall plus um, anticipating the modification of the construction service. So, so the modification is half a million dollars, $500,000, and then the shortfall is $200,000. <coughs> yes. Uh, uh -huh. I, I just have to break it up. W would it be useful to put that, you know, distinction or split it up in the, in the memo so it's clear to the yeah, board as to, okay, we're looking at a, Modification to the contract that will increase the scope and date by five hundred thousand uh, dollars, and then a shortfall of two hundred and uh, forty-four thousand yeah, dollars. I, can, I, can, I, can I mean, is it? Try not to put words in your mouth, but uh, no, I can. I can. It seemed, that. seemed unclear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Tom had his hand up first. Scott. So Mike, I'm still unclear about the city maps. I don't see where that actually shows up. It does. It's not declared anywhere. I'll put that in there. I'll see where we used it. Will we ever see it again, or is it going to go from here to the board? 
Uh, it'll just be clarified for the board. But I, I can put that in for the board of where that where that city match is. <clears throat> well, I just think that if you're going to if you're going to mention that there's city match in the memo, it should somewhere show up in the math. Yeah. Just for clarity. Mm. Uh, okay. Everybody hear that? Okay. Okay. Uh, Scott. So, but this amount you're asking for is within the project budget. You're not asking to transfer budget out of any other projects to cover this. No, right? no. Huh? And then you'll still have some over left over to cover the construction costs when you get those bids, right? Uh, yes, I think we have uh, 5.8 million of RTA funds. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions on that particular one? Uh, any questions on um, Mark Shuffle widening care for your Black Forest, the Sand Creek, that Sand Creek Bridge, <laughs> another bridge over Sand Creek? Go ahead. Mike, mm -hmm. this refers to uh, Calpoke Road, which is west of Black Forest. And the Mark Shuffle North only went from Woodman to connect to Black Forest Road. And you mentioned in there, and it's item three, Calpoke Road. It's, it's a bullet under number two. And you the complaint was apparently there's very poor access to Black Horse Road. Uh, so that's, and that's west of the bridge. The, bri the, the bridge that we have already approved of Cottonwood Creek is east of Almer. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you're talking about stuff that is west of Black Forest. You say, well, I had to look up what Cowpoke Road is, and I got it here. Going from Cowpoke to Black Forest Road. It's <clears throat> it's a uh, bullet statement right here, Mike. Yeah, the third. I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to picture in my mind where that is because this was we no. dra we drafted this. Cowpoke comes intersects with Black Forest, does it not? Yeah. And so the extension for Mark Shuffle is going to intersect Black Forest at Cowpoke. Is that correct? yeah? That is Cowpoke. Yeah, I believe because Cowpoke they've extended yeah. Cowpoke out to Black, Black Forest. Forest. Yeah, so we're going to tie into it. Yeah, we're not going west of Black Forest. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's Black Forest and there's Bolton. So it's going to cross Volmer and go over to Mark Black Shuffle Forest. Mark Shuffle is supposed to end at Black Forest. It, well, that's where. We are. Well, that's the intent is to. I'm, like I said, so I, you're going to from from Black Forest e, or West. If you continue on, it's going to be Cowpoke Road instead of Mark Chapel. It's already Cowpoke Road. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. You're going to change the name. Yeah. No. Well, that, that's all <laughs> new development. So I'm, I, I just know it, we're going from Woodman up and tying into Black Forest. That's new. Yeah, you have a little idea what's going on. <laughs> Jennifer here. Irvin, El Paso County. Um, Cowpoke Road is is going to be both on the west side of Black Forest and on the east side. So um, this is the section, this is the section um, as you look at uh, that is that is south of Volmer but north of Woodman. So it is it is within the area that is listed on the the PPRTA original Documents. It's it's within the corridor. So Cal folks go between go between Black Forest and Volmer, and then it turns into Mark Shuffle and going south. It it doesn't turn into Mark Shuffle. It, it it's uh, over in that area. But okay. there's there's areas where Cowpoke is exists today and will exist in the future east. But it, uh, um, Mark Shuffle turns into Research. Okay. Now where that new intersection? Yeah. Is. yeah okay. Mark Shuffle. Turns into research because Stapleton turns into Briargate. Right. <laughs> Gotta love Colorado Springs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, can you plug that information <laughs> into, into my GPS? We we can uh, we have a good map of this. We can provide that. We uh -huh. can bring that and provide that, or I can send it to Rick uh -huh. so you can kind of see that. Uh, if that helps. Yeah. The other thing I'd mention is that's like the 
third or fourth priority, so we're a long ways from well, getting there. Yeah, so well, I, just why. I started at the end. I wanted to work my way back. I, item one, road bridge or culvert over Sand Creek between Woodland Road and Cowboy, that, that is up there. How do I want to say? Where, do you, where are you using the wetlands fund in this particular project? Are you going to do work between Woodman on Mark Sheppel, between Woodman and, uh, for the sake of North Carefree Circle? Wait. Where the North Carefree? But yeah, that's south. Yeah. It's that would be the next North area that we're going to we're trying to figure out how to address. Uh, either with RTA funds or just in general, because it is getting real busy down there in North Carefree. Yeah, but the county is agreed to. I got to remember where I'm at with the county. Jen, I think, wrote it. It's my understanding there's a low dip in Mark Sheffield North, oh, mm -hmm. just north of the Acres facility, and the county's going to use. So, Some if you, so if you actually look at our budget, we talk about this. We talk about uh, that we've reserved in our PPRTA maintenance some money for that. But recognize that the city is taking the lead on the portion, upgrading the portion of Mark Shuffle in that area of North Carefree, which includes that box culvert. So we've, we've set aside, and I know that um, we've been having some discussions. I actually just sent some emails earlier, you know, here in this month to talk about Mark Shuffle, and, and I know that um, the city is taking a look at that. Um, but um, the, the county set aside that money because we're, we're working with the city in regards mm -hmm. to working together on that section. I don't have a problem. I'm just trying yeah. to figure out between Cowpoke and we've already approved the bridge over to Cottonwood Creek. And then they talk about it down here. You talk about that Texas crossing mm -hmm. down there? Yeah. yeah. That, that's, the, the, that's the $1.5 million that we've set aside. But, but ra rather than just installing it and putting a two-lane road over it, we know that the city's looking at doing, you know, the four-lane or capacity yeah. improvements, whatever is decided. And so... Um, we want to hit that area once and, and be a, as efficient and as as we can with that money. So we're working together. Okay. Does that help, Reb? I can show you a map. I, we can provide a map. We we can talk through. Maybe we do a, a summary. Uh, an update, yeah. Yeah. Kind of what what was. And there's a lot of development going up there that that we're trying to tap into and figure out how we can work with the the developers. Because that we don't have the money to, to widen that whole south stretch, from Woodman South. Yeah, actually, it's improved well, to well, Dublin. Du yeah, and from Dublin. Dublin South, yeah. And there's, there's a little bit of a, a traffic engineer vacuum now because we, we have, we'll have a new traffic engineer and we'll have to see kind of what their, his or her thoughts are on what, what should be going there. Tom, um, we've made the point before, and it evidently needs to be made again we should have maps with all of these so that we can visualize what's really going on uh, yeah I'll, I'll get those uh, <coughs> yeah <laughs> are you have a walk on mic uh, yes uh, so this is for uh, cartograph which is basically an inventory uh, inspection assessment software that we use that streets uses to track all the work that they do and uh, the contract expired and all this renewal so we're renewing a new contract and, um, and the operations is uh, using 72,000 of RTA maintenance funds to pay for for the license uh, the total license is 192 Rev got one then you Scott Basically, this item isn't on the list, and typically we just say items one through, in this case, one through three, or exclude one, doesn't make any difference. What do we do with this one? Do we add do this it as item number four. Okay. Okay, Scott, I'm sorry. Uh, similar question to what I had on the bridge maintenance. How was it determined? the percentage that PPRTA should pay for this license? <coughs> that I do not have an answer. I will get uh, something for the board.
Okay. Any other questions for Mike on these four items? Rick? Uh, I'm unclear on the action on number two. <clears throat> Oh, on the on the seven hundred thousand. So Mike, yeah. what, well, what I, I like can, is I was the one who had requested that. Should I say something? Yeah, yeah. The uh, seven hundred thousand um, dollars. There was a notation that there was a um, modification number two that in, was seven hundred thousand or seven hundred seventy thousand. Let me look that up. The um, modification two really it's for. Uh, $500,000 according to the previous memo. And then the shortfall, which is to make up the amount that's not part of that change order or modification, is $244,000. And I had asked for just a clarification of what's in the second modification versus the uh, shortfall that has to be covered. And, and that was uh, more of a clarification, and so that was the uh, what I had requested. And I believe that the city agreed to that. Yeah, we can. I can. I can detail that out. What I'm looking for here is basically CAC and board approval to use up to seven hundred seventy-seven thousand. But you uh, don't have a contract yet. We're not. There's no contract to approve. You're just asking. No offense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they, there will be modifications coming. You know, um, to so the back it's to not the. Budgeted. No, there is no. There is no RT budgeted in this project. Uh, for the design, that's why I'm asking for okay. that dollar amount, and then then we'll issue t we'll issue modification. Either I, I, f I forget if if uh, these are well, it'll probably be a change order. That five hundred thousand will come to the board as a change order when we actually go to use it. So uh, going on that, there's nothing budgeted for nineteen. Was this planned later? I mean, was this in because it's under capital? So was. This is going to be budgeted in later years? No, we've got five point eight million. When we originally got the design contract, we were thinking that that would we were just planning on using grant money. And so we we uh, requested a certain amount of grant money for design from CDOT. And we need a little bit more, but to go through the CDOT process to move more grant money into the design phase is a three to four to five month process. I just thought it would be easier to come and see if I can use RTA money because we've got $5.8 million for this project budgeted uh, now. So I'm just carving out a little bit for this. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Tony. Would it be reasonable on this one? Uh, I mean, I think we do the kind of pre-approvals on, on contracts up to a certain amount before, the, before we actually get the contract in. Would it be fair on this one to actually divide it into the three different things, the, the shortfall, the modification number one, and, the, and then the pre-approval of the construction? Can we just divide that into three and make this really simple? Because it's still the same total amount, but that way we actually have them in, two, in the three separate categories that we're trying to approve all at once here. Well, I, 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 I don't think any construction costs are in here yet. This is all design, design and engineering service or uh, yeah, in, uh, construction management engineering services. So I think what what is confusing that it's beginning to come clear is the 500K that's shown in engineering services is actually part of the 777. Right. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and so he's showing it. At top as part of the total project cost to date for it for engineering, but it's not clear that that's because it's under the under our mod limit. It shows up on our task order mod list versus coming through here because it's oh. below the threshold well, that oh, yeah. we approved recently. That's part of the confusion, I think. And okay. the, and the seven hundred, well, you'll have to come back for. So. Okay. Well, actually, let's. Let's go back to on the back side of that. Back side, okay. Okay. I, here it is. Okay. So here, here's what we're looking at. So we're looking for approval for a modification one for thirty-two thousand, and then modification two would include the shortfall and the five hundred thousand dollars. Everybody, see that on the back of the memo. Yeah, it would be. Today. 
Yeah, it would be <laughs> approved for HDR for these two mods for the 777,000. Mr. Grab, I did have just a question about that again. So, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'm still a little confused. The, the modification, modification two, uh, is for $500,000. It, 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 the, the shortfall. If there was no modification, we're still short about two hundred twenty thousand dollars. If there was no modification one and no mod two on this contract, the original contract, the grant does not cover the entire amount. So the shortfall, being a modification, can can you walk to, walk through me as why those are the same? Why should consider it the same? A shortfall means we don't have enough money to cover the original contract, so we have to authorize more money to cover the amount that we've already are on contract to provide. That's not a contract modification, and if I'm wrong, if you please please correct me. Uh, you're looking on the back of the memo. Are you uh, the back side of the memo? I'll take a look. Hold on a second. This was in the paper packet. Yes. Oh yeah. No, I, I look. Okay, the vendor information, HDR, contract term, that one. Yes, and it shows there mod one for thirty-two, mod two is seven forty-four five forty-six. Now, now go back to. The confusion, perhaps, and just clarification, go back to the uh, first page of the memo. What is the original design contract? What's that amount? $1.6 And how much was the grant? We only had $1.39 in grant in, under the design phase. So, so we're, we don't have enough money to cover the original design contract? Is that We have correct? enough money. It just, I, don't wanna, I didn't want to go to CDOT and spend six months trying to get $200,000. So I've come to the board to use, start using some of the budgeted RTA money for this project. We have $5.8 million, and so I'm requesting 777000 of RTA to, to, to go to HDR in modification one for 32000 and seven and mod two would be 744000 and that's broken into basically $500,000 for design services and the 200000 to cover the gap between the grant money available and the final design. Anti-deficiency. I don't think it's an anti-deficiency in that they've got a program in their budget, $5.8 million, and this is just in the design phase. So they have planned on spending this money. This is just a mod to uh, bring us up to speed and complete the design portion of it. Is, is that fair? Am I understanding that? Yeah. Right, so they're they're now beginning to dig into the 5.8 million of RTA money. So how much was the city match supposed to be? Was it a 30 percent match or there was, something? Well, there's 17.81 city match, but there was an additional three three hundred thousand dollars that we had in there uh, as overmatch. Is that? That's, yeah, I see what you're doing. It's not me. So either. you had the one three nine. And I can I can I can explain. Grand. Plus another 300, so you got 1.798. Yes, yeah, so would For you? Just the well, there was actually the grants for like uh, 7 million, and there was 300 of city match. Spread In addition across. to yeah, so I can I can I, I can think, detail that out. Yeah, I think what's confusing is I, I think it'd be easier if we start with the the budgeted dollar amount for the project mm -hmm. yeah, I can do that. and then show what you've done in mod one what what the match was all that stuff mm. and then show what you're requesting I think if if you rearrange that math at the bottom of page one it would be a little more clear as to what we're what we're trying to do okay yeah Jean John I'm I'm wondering why it always seems we're, we're missing pieces of information every time we look at these things and saying, well, well, we'll get it to the board or we'll send it back to you in a revision and all of this. Why aren't we getting complete total information from the get-go so that we can make a decision for our job? I mean, if we're here just to be a rubber stamp, I can stay home. I can provide that. Like I said it just there was. Um, but why isn't it provided today? Well, that was my fault for 
thinking that this was pretty pretty straightforward, just saying that we have RTA money available and I want to use some. And uh, I'll just make sure that this is spelled out more in detail. It gets a little convoluted, but I can I can put all everything together. Well, it does become convoluted with all of the different source funds. So if we had, um, you know, we all know the definition of the word assume. You know, so if mm. we could have the actual documentation, then we wouldn't be spending time going around in circles and asking so many questions. Okay. It would no, that's, just well, be and that's my fault, and I'll take responsibility for that and just put more detail. I, you know, I, I do try to keep these memos concise because they can get, you know, a little pretty full. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Mike? Are we, regardless of how it's shown on here, it looks like what he's asking for approval of is this the seven hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars out of the budget that's already been approved. Right, right, um, Mr. I, I'd like to move for approval of all four items. Okay, uh, we have a uh, we have a second from Ed. Any further discussion on the four items? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Three opposed. Joan Reb and Tom Vierka. And then, Mr. Chair, I'm I'm after this. I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, leave. I think my wife is going into labor. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. Oh good. really? You got to hang around. <laughs> <laughs> It's his first. Well, good luck. They can last for hours. Yeah, I was just going to say. Or it could be before you get there. <laughs> well, good luck to, to both of you. And congratulations. All right, thank you. All right. Um, capital maintenance and public transportation contracts, item number B. City of Manitou Springs. No. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, CAC members. My name is Shelley Cobaugh. I'm the Public Services Director for the City of Manitou Springs. I'm uh, requesting approval for two uh, contracts. One is for, with a design firm called Bohannon Houston uh, Incorporated for design of Manitou Avenue from Park Avenue to Serpentine, which we call Manitou Avenue 5C or MAPS, Manitou Avenue Park Serpentine. We've given it an acronym. Um, so we're seeking the use of $106,045 of PPRTA funding for this contract. The, re the balance of the contract fee will be paid by uh, through CDOT IGA for TIP funding. And we do have $978,700 of available PPRTA funding for this project that's um, been budgeted, and we're going to get this kicked off. Uh, and we invite you to come out and see Manitou when we're done. So that's the first one. Yeah. That was for when the entire contract, it's, it's attached to the entire contract, and um, the, the mayor just executed the contract with the city last night at city council, so I wasn't able to get a copy of the contract um, into this documentation for you. The in the yeah, oh. right. So I have those if you want, if you would like me to go through and tell you who I'll propose, and I can do that right now. I have them with me. Uh, there were three. That's okay. I'll tell you who they are. I think I can find it relatively quickly. Um, did you do best value or low bid? We did a qualifications-based selection. Yeah. Uh, so it was based on qualifications, and we opened the fee proposal after the, the selection is made. Okay. So they were the lowest bidder okay. and also the, the first selected. And I can't. It's in this pile. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can tell you afterwards if you want, if you'd like. Uh, the second contract is for um, a mobility study for the city of Manitou Springs. We're, we're entering into a memorandum of understanding with the city of Colorado Springs and uh, the Cog Railway 
to do a mobility study for the entire city and we would like to be able to use our uh, capital project transit funds for that. The contract amount, which in the City of Manitou Springs will be the holder of the contract with Kimley Horn, who is the design consultant. The contract amount is for $150,000. Uh, we will be reimbursed uh, one-third of that fee by the City of Colorado Springs and one-third of that fee by the COG Rail, and uh, we have separate agreements with them, and we are seeking use of $50,000 of our PPRTA funds for our portion of that agreement. When you say PPRTA funds, capital maintenance or? Um, this is, a, the cap, it's capital funding from our transit station. It's called the Transit Shuttle and Surface or Structure Parking but it has project and it's a capital and the capital title is um, the it's the same capital funds we used to purchase the Hiawatha Gardens property for use as a first future transit site and before we can determine what our parking and roadway improvement needs are going to be around that transit center we need to ascertain what kind of uh, mobility is needed how many people are going to be coming to the cog how many people are coming to visit from Garden of the Gods it's kind of an overarching higher view uh, traffic study, a lot of communities do them, and it's um, really, really overdue that we do one in Manitou. Yeah, he's gross in this one. Absolutely. I, I don't have a problem, but you use the term transit capital, and all transit money goes to Mountain Metro. No. No. We have a title capital. The capital project was for the RTAT community. Okay. We've got $650,000 The voters approved it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Shelley? Um, while you're here, what is uh, um, what's going to be? Maybe I'll wait until Brian finishes, and I'll ask that question about the route change in Manitou. So. Any other questions for Shelley on this? Do I have a motion to approve the request for Manitou Springs? So moved. Second. Larry. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> item number 7A, City of Coral Springs Transit. Good afternoon. Brian Vitoli with the City of Colorado Springs, Mountain Metropolitan Transit, with your monthly transit report. Uh, for December of 2018, uh, as compared to December of 2017, uh, we saw... Um, about a 2% decrease uh, in our fixed route ridership for that time period. For our ADA power transit services, um, for that same time period, we saw a uh, uh, almost a 5.5% decrease. And for our van pool services, um, we saw a decrease of 4.7% um, from December of 2018 to December of 2017. And um, I think we, we saw a little bit of impact from the government shutdown because a lot of the van pools are for federal employees either going up toward Denver or down to Pueblo, um, plus mixing in the holidays with that. Um, that's probably a good justification for the reduced ridership. But our, our van pools were really strong um, in 2018, so we're, we're really pleased with that. So we'll see, we'll see where we are again next month. Um, project update for our spring service changes. Um, it's going to be somewhat of a light service change. Um, we are implementing a new Route 38, which is service from the Voyager, um, I'm sorry, from Academy and Union up to uh, the Northern Hospital. So that's Memorial North and the new Children's Hospital. Uh, this was part of our public process during the fall, but we delayed implementation of this because um, both hospitals said that they just weren't ready for a, for a fall implementation. So um, Children's is still going to be, I believe, finishing up when we implement this, but they should be up and running full capacity by May or so. But um, So we're excited to get this, this uh, final new route implemented. And this is a a joint partnership between the, the northern hospitals, um, 
Pikes Peak Community College and Mountain Metro. Um, we receive funding through the Colorado Springs Health Foundation to help fund um, this new service, but also the new route that we started in the fall to PPCC's uh, Rampart Campus. So this is a, a good example of a, hopefully what will be a successful partnership. Um, and a couple other items, uh, Manitou Springs, um, are having some uh, budget limitations and they requested uh, to some somewhat reduce service on Route 36, which is their seasonal shuttle that runs on Manitou Avenue. Um, so we did some ridership analysis and we recommended to them Route 36 generally in the summertime, you know, from the beginning of May through the end of September, it runs from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. And then on Friday and Saturday evening, uh, it would run until midnight. And we looked at the ridership, and the ridership was really pretty light in those early morning hours and um, in, the, in the late evening hours. So we recommended to reduce it to operate between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. and to eliminate that late evening Friday and Saturday service because um, it was something we were recommending for several years, but they wanted to give it a, a good try, and um, so they, they've uh, agreed to that, and that will save them, you know, roughly $40,000, I think, um, for, for 2019. And, you know, with the hopes that once the, the Cog Railroad is up and running and that agreement that they have with the Cog Railroad and more visitors come into town, um, hopefully we can up the service or do something different at that time. And then the final item are just some uh, some slight scheduling adjustments to routes one and 25 to make connections better and on-time performance better. Are there any questions? <clears throat> any questions for Brian? Seeing none, thank you, Brian. All right, thank you. Uh, item 7B is maintenance of effort presentations. Um, <clears throat> Rick Sonnenberg, I'll just uh, kick it off, and then you can decide if you want individual presentations or if the memos that are in the packet are sufficient. <clears throat> the uh, establishing IJ requires that uh, the CAC and the board review uh, the maintenance of effort provision, which states specifically it, it is the intent of the parties that funding from the PPRTA will not be used to substitute for or reduce Colorado Springs funding for the uh, existing transit system or to substitute for or reduce any party's funding for maintenance activities. And the, the base year is 2004, uh, the, the year before the PPRTA started, so all member governments are, are supposed to submit documentation that proves that they have not uh, in their non-RTA money budget uh, that they've not gone below the base year of 2004. So you have the five submittals in your packet, and uh, Mr. Chair, you can decide if the CAC would like to hear from each or if uh, they're self-explanatory, so your decision. Um, <clears throat> does anyone have a question about these or have the need for one of the member governments that are present to come up and explain their documentation? Seeing none, it appears as though they've all met that maintenance of effort criteria. Uh, this, this is an action item. So um, seeing no one jumping up, all right, Reb? I move they be approved. Reb moves they be approved. Second. Joan, a second. Uh, <clears throat> any further discussion? Just a, ma a matter of, uh, <clears throat> I just want to make a point that um, we're 16 years into this or so, give or take, uh, a year or two. And uh, Colorado Springs barely meets the 2004 levels. So um, I would leave that for the consideration of the taxpayers. Jane? Is this supposed to be uh, reflective of all maintenance? Uh, for the city, or is this transit only? Should be for roads and, and transit, right? Well, yeah, it, uh, only the city has transit, so it's 
transit for the city and then roadway maintenance for all five. Anything further, Gene? Well, it's just confusing on the title of page two where it says general transportation maintenance. If that includes streets maintenance, then it's a little misleading in the way it's presented. Okay. That, yes, page two is just, uh, as I understand it from the city, and unless Mike wants to uh, revise that, that's, that's roadway maintenance. They, they use the word transportation, but uh, if you'll use roadway instead of transportation maintenance on that page two that's their base year was the 18 million one <clears throat> that's roadway maintenance then on, then on the next page is the transit on the back side of that sheet is transit the base year was five million seven one seven for city tr metro transit and this is showing that they have uh, exceeded the five million seven one seven from 2004 well, one one comment, and I know that this ship has already sailed. Um, my understanding, from what I have seen since I've been on this uh, in this seat, is that the roadway maintenance numbers from the city of Colorado Springs specifically exclude capital improvement project funding that was being spent for roadway maintenance and has ever since they first started reporting the numbers which under-reports their level of effort. And I know that that's gone through the board and it's been approved with the way it's being reported. But the bottom line is, is that monies that were spent in the past directly for roadway maintenance in this city have not been being reported as meeting, as being part of the level of effort in prior years. Okay. So noted. Um, we have a... Um, a uh, question and a second. Uh, so um, we have a motion. I'm sorry. I just want to hopefully someday put this to bed. Now, if the city of Colorado Springs comes in at $18,102 or $18,102,557, they have met their effort, right? Then why do we keep picking on them? Because they barely meet it. They did it. That's all we ask. So when are we going to stop it? Well, if you figure in inflation over the last 15 years, the city is not the city is not fulfilling the same obligation the other governments are. That is not the idea. I know it's not. I'm just I just put it out there for the consideration of the taxpayers because as a taxpayer. I find it very frustrating that the city has continually increased taxes for things of this nature, diverted monies to non-essential infrastructure, and is barely meeting the maintenance of effort from 2004. That's ridiculous. Okay. Well, um, I, I, as a taxpayer, think that they're meeting their effort, and so I'm just responding to you. And Thank that's you. fine. Okay, uh, we have a we have a call for we have a motion on the floor in a second. Um, <clears throat> so let's just call the question. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, thank you. Uh, we good discussion on otherwise, but um, I don't want to get into back and forth between a couple of people's opinions uh, in this forum. Carlos, did you have something to say? I just want the uh, the record to note that the uh, the two C sales tax uh, brings in between fifty to sixty million dollars a year per uh, for um, uh, for road maintenance. Uh, it's the mill and overlay and the carbon garter, ca curb and gutter. So the city is spending money. It's not reflected in this report, uh, but the two C brings in um, probably about three times the amount that we see here on the for the for the city amount of twenty million dollars. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Item 7C, we're talking about the value engineering update for the bridge, uh, the nowhere, American, the beautiful bridge. 
Yes. So um, there was a question uh, last month. Uh, we approved a change order for Anderson, Mason, and Dale for 48000 to evaluate some, to do some value engineering. And there was a question of what did that result. And I gave a verbal uh, report to the board last month that it saved about a million and a half. And basically, I just outlined what they did is the contractor actually looked at two things. One, can we build more of the bridge instead of just the steel structure and move it into place? And they found that they could build more of it uh, and then lift a more complete bridge in place. That saves time. Uh, a lot of the railroad flagging costs, which are kind of a, um, you know, oh, seems almost like extortion money. But yeah. so there was some savings there. And then, um, but they, the reason we had to have the design firm look at it is they had to make sure that if we built more of a bridge on the ground and picked it up, it didn't fall apart. So I had to analyze that. And then the actual bridge uh, was changed, the bridge deck. They went to a less expensive material. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. it changed the thickness of the deck and the structure. So again, that had to be evaluated. Is that going to hold up in design and when they move it? So those exercises cost um, 48000 but it saved about a million and a half in c construction costs, or will it save. Rev, why would they same engineer that designed it, $48,000, to find a way to save a million and a half? Well, just asking. I'd like to be we, in the business too. I'll over over design everything. Well, I think uh, based on the design and when we got an actual number and we were over the budget, we had started looking to see where we could save some money. We don't want a Florida University bridge. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. In a value engineering process, you generally bring in a third party to run it. You have engineers from other other engineering firms, you have contractors involved, you come up with recommendations. This was the money for the original designer to participate and evaluate the recommendations that came out of that process. Where does it? <clears throat> uh, Mike, what's the span, what's the length of that span, do you know? Oh, Not okay. right off, no I don't. Okay. Is that, is it going to have a Pier in the middle of the railroad, or is it going to expand to the whole thing? Free span all the way across? It's That's what Kathleen said. I can't recall. I know. I don't think it was a clear span. I can, I can look at it. Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah. I can't remember. I know yeah, it was we did. a clear span. It looked like 300 feet, according to Kathleen. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll leave that to the engineers that that's all doable and structurally sound. Um, <clears throat> Any uh, other questions from Mike on this value <coughs> clarification on the value engineering that we had last month? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> All right. 7D, request to use capital mm. funds for UCCS Spine Road. Mm. Okay. Let me, let me go through. Okay. i got to figure out how to. <laughs> Oh. I've found it already. Oh. All righty. So we have a project that we are looking for approval to use RTA funds. Um, and I would have to figure out how to drive this silly thing. Okay. So the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs has been growing quite phenomenally. They've expanded their main campus off of Austin Bluffs and they're building quite a bit on off of Nevada and there's actually uh, some new construction plan. Right now they're doing a Bill Heibel building and uh, as the two, as the campus has grown there was increased traffic that was using Staten and Eagle Rock Road to get from the main campus to the west campus and the neighborhood was concerned about cut through traffic and speeding. It's a it's, uh, it's paved now, but it's basically a country road, two lanes, ditches, and the, the neighbors walk, walk and walk their dogs, and they were just concerned. So they came to the city, and we decided to close off. We put a security gate 
uh, near the, the north end or the south end of the Stanton here. And it's only accessible for emergency service um, and, and campus police and then their, their little maintenance buggies can go through it. But traffic is basically cut off through traffic. So the university was working with traffic engineering to uh, see what they do because we have all this traffic that's been uh, forced onto uh, Austin Bluffs in Nevada. So they, um, they came up with an idea of building an alternate road that would connect the west and main campus through UCCS property. And basically it comes off of Stanton, goes, there's, a, there's an existing dirt road and parking lot, it'll use that. And then it just kind of goes cross country and ties into uh, the roundabout that's uh, ties in the end center and, and the, the main camp or the west campus there. Um, this has kind of uh, been a fast track. We started working on the design in November, and um, the university is going to actually contract and build the road. They'll take the lead, and the city is looking at uh, sharing the cost with them. This will become a city road. Uh, they'll deed over the land. We're working on an IGA to, to do that. Um, and then it's just a two-lane road at this point. The university thinks that there'll be subsequent development uh, through these, this area. And as that happens, they will widen the road at their cost. Uh, so we're just building kind of a, it's not, a, a little bit more than just a pilot road, but um, it's a, just a two-lane road at this point. So what we have is um, we have about a $2.2 million cost estimate. 200000 of that is a fiber optic line that the university wants and they'll pay for. So the base construction is $2 million, and we're requesting a $1 million to split that funding, and that will come out of our roadway safety and congestion-wide uh, traffic uh, programs. And that money is, is there now. We're not looking at transferring any more money into it. Um, so basically it's a little bit of a safety project and also congestion mitigation to, to keep uh, the bus shuttles, no, the university shuttles off of the arterials. No, it's full access. <clears throat> um, Brian had been first and then Scott. Um, so just so I understand the proportions of this correctly, we have public roads that have been paid for by the public, paved by the public, maintained by the public, that have been shut off because the traffic was not to the liking of the neighborhood, which is understandable mm -hmm. considering the growth of UCCS. So this is a problem that the growth of UCCS has created and they want the taxpayers to add additional monies into what has already been paid to support the Colorado University system because of an issue they created. You know, I'm not fully aware of all the details as far as how the project came to fruition. It does make sense to me. Uh, if this road was, were not built, we would have to invest into Austin Bus in Nevada, and I'm not so sure if we can get a whole more lot of capacity out of that with this kind of money. Um, there's already dual left lanes; it's uh, pretty congested. So I think that the th the thought was is that an alternate route would relieve the traffic. Uh, and, and that's, you know, kind of like that's the situation Colorado has, the east-west thing. There's, there's only so many routes and, yeah. you know, Constitution, you know, has been considered, hey, let's expand that, but they don't want that. So, you know, we're, 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 we, you know, we're kind of facing the same dilemma that the citywide here is do we try to funnel more traffic onto existing infrastructure that's already at capacity or do we find an alternate route? Um, has in, in, in this in this case, you know, the alternate route is a new alignment because we did close off the neighborhood street. Has anybody asked them what happens if we don't participate? No, I'm not aware of that. Okay. <clears throat> Scott, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I know when we approved the budget for these 
items, there's usually a list of projects that are associated with each of those. Was this one of those at the time the budget was presented? And if not, which of those projects are going to have to be put off to make room for this one? I, uh, I do believe that they did have uh, a line item for the Spine Road uh, coming into the 19 budget. I'm not, I'm not aware of every project they have, but. Um, uh, Tom? Um, you can put a nice slide up, but it's still capital construction. And it's not on the capital construction list as, as approved by the voters. And just to find some pots yeah. of money to take it out of roadway safety and traffic ops and congestion incident management, it's capital construction, Mike. Yeah, and this is these are capital the funds in these projects, uh, these programs. Yeah, but this is a road that you're doing. You're not you're not addressing some congestion on some other road. You're building a new road here. Well, that is a way of managing congestion is to build new roads, because you know the typically yes you do expand the uh, you do expand the existing roadway system, but when they're already pretty pretty full and at capacity, and you start looking at other alternatives. Uh, Ed? Uh, yeah, just to be clear, was this ever on PPIT? The programs are. It's the, the, the programs, but not an A-list project. This is... Uh, this came up a couple of years ago when uh, some of us warned about having very generalized pots of money that can be really diverted and used any way that people see fit. Um, and that's kind of what we're talking about. I'd like to call him myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, uh, n n none of this is personal. Okay, mm -mm. <laughs> but this is wrong in my book on so many levels. Um, <clears throat> as, my, as Brian said, UCCS generated this problem. This did not happen yesterday. This has been going on for a long time. You've already been through uh, a design contract that was let. That community has been complaining since they started working on the West Campus down there on Stenton Road. So those could, they've been complaining for years there. Um, <clears throat> the closure was probably the last result, um, but it should have been addressed by UCCS and their capital program years ago as part of the expansion into the western part of that campus. Um, the proposed uh, routing uh, goes across a very wide and fairly deep ravine uh, that is going to present environmental or flood risk issues. Yep. We are actually building a road mm -hmm. that should have been an A-listed project, and it's been you're using the wrong pots of money, in my opinion. Um, and if the city needs to find a way to spend a million dollars on roadway traffic safety and operations and congestion management, give me a week and I'll give you a list. Um, <clears throat> and so... <clears throat> um, it, it, and then, um, and so the other part that's very frustrating here um, is that the city and UCCS have been working on this issue for a long time, and the city has now committed to UCCS to spend a million dollars of RTA money without RTA's approval for that. And now, if we back out, they've already let a contract. There, I mean, well, they, no, they, they have. They have. They, they've got stuff out for bids of which include, in their mind, a million dollars of PPRTA funding. And um, uh, so they're counting on us for that million dollars. Um, it's a fairly tight schedule because they want to, surprise, let a contract in February so we can't send this back and say no without egg on the face for the city of Colorado Springs and or the RTA. Uh, and we're going to look like the bad guy. Uh, and then, because this needs to be city property, they're doing an IGA. This didn't start yesterday either. And so somebody plans on transferring this money to the city and make it a city road. Uh, this is not an RTA issue. 
I know the congestion at Nevada and uh, and Austin Bluffs is is bad. I drive that road at least once, if not three times a day, uh, through that intersection there. Yes, there is a lot of traffic, but it's been created by the shuttle buses coming from the apartment complex down on Nevada, uh, as well as the sporting center, the Int Center, all of that other stuff. This is not new. And I just don't feel like that this is the proper use of a million dollars of roadway safety, traffic operations, and, tr and mi mitigation yeah. traffic. So um, that I just this is this is wrong in so many ways, in my opinion. And additionally, the idea of <coughs> turning over the construction management to a non-RTA member, they're going to have UCCS run this contract and everything, and we don't have any relationship with them whatsoever. Another point, Larry. Yes, the, the thing I don't understand, Mike, is that, you know, right now, 2C funding, which is, you know, for roads, repaving, all that, has been over budget, or I should say, is over what they have projected the income mm -hmm. for 2C for each one of the years. That, to me, would be a more logical place to pull $1 million to right. do that. You know, as the chairman said, you know, this was never on the priority project. Uh, I agree with you that, you know, this, I just don't think this is right using the RTA to try to do this project. Understood. And I, yeah, I don't this started. Yeah. This started before, we started before you, so uh, uh, Gene and then Joan. Well, first, to be succinct, Jim, you said everything that I would have said had I had enough information and probably said it better, so I'm in complete agreement with what you stated and that this is wrong for so many reasons that it's hard to imagine getting it approved. With regard to the 2C money, I think it's wrong there as well, although that doesn't fall under our purview, but that 2C money was intended to fix existing infrastructure that was deteriorating, not build new roads. True statement. John? I also concur with your comments, and I, and I guess part of the problem that I see with this is this wasn't a, um, an issue from yesterday. And why are we just seeing it now, given that they want to have a closing date of February 18? No IGAs have been signed. Um, you know, this is a UCCS issue. It's not a PPRTA. Now, if there's 2C funding that can go and make it a city road or whatever, that's, that's up to the city and, and UCCS. But I think it is fundamentally flawed to bring UCCS into this process where it is not a member government and should not be the recipient of taxpayer funds. Just a moment, Carlos. Um, Brian was first. You know, I just, I just want to remark that um, when I was going to school up there, it was a commuter campus. And then all of a sudden, we have all these not-for-profits that are showing up. We have Lanes. We have Ant Federal Credit Union. We have El Pomar. I would think that the chancellor, who is now in place and has done a lot of work, can find money through grants through these three organizations. We shouldn't have to pay for that because they're going to apparently pop in a whole bunch of other things. There's, and then what are we going to set a precedent for? So that's my concern with that. Thank you. Carlos? Yeah, I'm just trying to just understand just a question here. The Stanton Road, um, that is a public street, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And uh, it was closed for, again, can you please explain why, again, it was closed? The neighborhood was complaining of all the cut-through traffic and speeding. Th they were complaining, but was there a uh, safety issue that yes. required yes. the city? Okay, so the city made a determination that there was too much congestion through that neighborhood. Is that correct? Would yes. that be a fair assessment? Uh -huh. So there is a congestion component. Would that be a fair characterization? If there is a congestion component that's driving or motivating the city to consider alternative routes through the campus. Is, would that be a correct assessment? Yeah, I think that's why the city looked at partnering is because, you know, we pushed all this traffic onto the main roads and and it was they looked at it and they, they 
they determined that this this would help more than if they would have put improvements out on the main. Well, well I just want to make sure it's, it's not simply just satisfying the, the neighbors, neighbors here. There's a serious uh, congestion issue and safety issue on a public road, and Stanton Road and Eagle Rock Roads are public thoroughfares. Now, granted, there's been a lot of growth from the university uh, there. Um, you know, they are a public entity. Um, the, the students there, uh, are they paying sales taxes as well into the um, sales tax for PPRTA when they buy books and food there? Sure. So, so they are paying taxes. Th that would be, they're, they're not exempt from PPRTA's um, purview or they're, they're within the boundaries and so therefore they are paying taxes and can be considered a beneficiary. Is that correct? Go ahead. That, that's a question. It's a question, right? They, they are they are paying they are paying the students they are paying the, the fact is is there are multiple landowners there's the um, there's the private landowners the residents there as well as the university and clearly there's been so much growth there they're going to have to work out this issue of uh, congestion if we don't build the road I would say that we remove the access gate and allow the shuttles to go down Stanton Road and perhaps uh, upgrade or rehabilitate Stanton Road and Eagle Rock Road and and th because those are public streets. And there are a lot of pedestrian and bicycle and skateboard and all that other kind of traffic uh, along there as well. So, um, Gene? We've had assertions about congestion and large amounts of traffic. What are the traffic counts? What are the congestion? That's a general statement and it needs a specific answer. How many trips per day are we talking about uh, up and down Stanton Road? that got pushed on to public streets because we put the gate in and prevented Stanton York Road use through to Eagle Rock? Um, I, I, I don't know the count, but I can tell you that the, bu the shuttle buses run from those major parking lot up behind the Ant Center and the one down across from the entrance to Costco at the new ball field and that stuff. They're probably running on a 15-minute schedule. Uh, most days it's colleges in, in reference, so it's a steady line, and it's not just one, it's multiple. So there's a steady line of just UCCS shuttle buses. Some of them are large, uh, like city buses, and some of them are smaller, but there's a constant flow of those in addition to the individual students' cars, bicycles, uh, and walking, and pedestrians. And, that Stanton Road is very narrow. It has no sidewalks. It's just got ditches uh, on either side of it. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not, um, did that answer your question? I, I don't have an exact number, but. Well, it was more but I can, this uh, way than to you, Jim. But I can tell you that um, <clears throat> this was, this, this didn't generate yesterday. I've been here 14 years, and I've been cutting through that street myself for 14 years. So this didn't start yesterday by any means. And uh, this you should have seen this coming, and they, this should have been in their long-range plan a long time ago, in my opinion. Mike? Well, I, like I said, I have valid points. Anybody got anything else they wanted to say? I move that we do not recommend this to the board. I said and I will give you any indication, and I think Jim will give a presentation to the board specifically, but I do not recommend a, recommend approval. We have a, recommend, yeah, a recommendation, recommendation and a second. Uh, any further discussion on this particular project? Can you please repeat the, uh, the question? Is it a negative recommendation or a positive recommendation? If we're voting yes or no, what are we voting negative. on? Negative recommendation. We do not decline. We don't no. So the motion is to decline this one. Okay. Right. The ayes yeah. no. no. mean no. Who, who made the second? Brian. Brian. Okay. So in, in this case, an I means no in terms of recommending to the board. Nays would mean that you are for this proposal. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of not recommending this to the board, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. So we have one approval to recommend, and the rest is a recommend to not approve. Fourteen to one. Okay. Thank you. All right.
uh, monthly change order property information only. If anything for Mike on that. By the way, I just uh, thank you for for doing this. Uh, we were talking about March Shuffle Road over Sand Creek Bridge. If you look at the bottom of your sheet in the task order log, you'll see two task order mods uh, in in that listing on March Shuffle for that bridge. So I didn't do the math to see what they add up to and whether they were shortfall or adjusted funding, but at least we're seeing the task orders uh, as we said we would. Any questions on any of that? Okay, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Item number eight, administrative action and reports, uh, recent board actions. Anything for Rick? Information item, I'll take any questions if you have them. Was there, uh, was there anything in particular in the uh, GAP project that they believe you needed to know about that wasn't included in the uh, presentation that they did? I will tell you that under 8B today in, in, in about 30 seconds. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, actually, shorter than that. <laughs> 8B. <laughs> okay, the, uh, I put in red the changes from last month. At, uh, number one is uh, a major event that the uh, El Paso County Board of uh, County Commissioners uh, approved the federal infra grant for the $65 million. And you can see the other, uh, and then number five, uh, the, the timeline has been stretched out a little. Uh, in the, <laughs> in the 2022. Can we stretch out our payment? <laughs> well, that's they an will. interesting segue. That's an interesting, <laughs> interesting segue, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I was going to present this anyway, Reb, but since you gave me that uh, softball to hit, um, wiffle ball may be easier. Um, <clears throat> The board has been discussing in several executive sessions the, the impending fact that we are not going to have $5 million, to, to, uh, $5 million of revenue in excess of budget at the end of 2018. You have to take the gross sales tax revenue over budget plus the gross uh, revenue over budget of the interest income. All that has to add up to over nine million, and as you saw in the financials, the sales tax just adds up to 3.1. So even if we have a great December, we might get to 3.5 on the sales tax. And Bev told you about the million something. So <clears throat> we're going to be woefully short of five million. But the IGA between the five member governments uh, from uh, shortly after the uh, ballot measure of 2017 that where the voters approved by a two to one margin to, to give uh, to contribute 10 million to CDOT that IGA between the five members says uh, we don't know who, who put it in there it wasn't anybody on the PPRTA side of the table but uh, it, it ended up in there uh, that it's a maximum of two years and up and, and a maximum of $5 million for each of the two years. So if uh, Bevan, my estimate is that the, the best we're going to be able to do is 3.5 at the, at the end of 2018, then, Reb, we're going to have to stretch out uh, to more than two years. So that means we would the, the board is has been discussing the last couple of uh, executive sessions, and they have it on their executive session. Uh, the, the CAC gets their packet, so when you get that packet um, emailed to you, the link emailed to you tomorrow, you'll see that the board's going to have another executive session, and uh, after the executive session, they're going to consider a new amendment to the IGA between the five. It, it's a referral out from the board to the five saying, please strike the sentence that says a maximum of two years 
and just take the time limit out. So over a three, four, five year period uh, with revenue in excess of budget, we can pay CDOT the ten million. So yeah. that, yeah. that simply uh, the, the bottom line is is primarily deleting that phrase. Hmm. Can't we just say that since the you know toll lane wasn't disclosed to the public before the ballot <laughs> measure, um, we're just kind of following what's in the written thingy. While, while you ask that same question, it's now going to be six months plus longer construction time. Okay. We had this all planned out. It's pre-planned. We got to do it now, including the ten million dollars and the fifteen million dollars from the county and the ten million from PPRTA. We were in such an all-fired <coughs> hurry, and now we're in mind. I'm happy to. I will be as soon as I get to them here. Now, now that, that's that's the IGA between the five that has the two-year yeah. max. There's a separate IGA be, uh, between the PPRTA board and CDOT that says we will do our best, that, that the board will do its best to, to get the ten million including go going back to the five member governments and asking them to uh, change the IGA between the five to take out the two year max. But there's no guarantee. No. Okay. Uh, Rick? Uh, isn't there an option if, if we wanted to go up to $10 million so. I just in two off. years, <laughs> rather than extending the time, why don't we just lower the amount we end up giving them in two years? So we only be able to give them seven million in two years. Yeah, they'll make it up in tolls anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, just uh, I mean, this way. Is is there two sides to that coin? Is it extending the time, uh, or is limiting the amount we can get done in two years, or do we have to definitely go with extended time? Until we get the event. I think that I think the answer, Rick, correct me, but the voters approved up to ten million dollars. Up to ten million. Right. right. So well, I we're, think the we're in the same situation. Yeah. If we don't have, we're not saying we're going to have to give them ten million, it's up to a ten million. Uh, was, in it, two was it specific? I think the wording is not to exceed ten million. Not to yeah. exceed. Yeah. I, I yeah. have it over there, but I, I just So yeah, your 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 point there is yeah. but the other, the other thing would be to just the two-year thing is only in one set of the IGAs, so we tied our hands into two years, and so this is just untying our hands, and we still make our commitment to the state of ten million dollars to just stretch it over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I liked your thing. And the reason it, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 this could yet come to the CAC for recommendation, but. In the executive sessions, they they were feeling that uh, only having two or three months to go through each of their. Thank you, <clears throat> thanks, Bev. But yeah, the ballot measure said in in an amount not to exceed ten million. <clears throat> so, but the in the executive sessions, the the board uh, several of the board members said it, it would take two or three or four months to to get that the IGA amendment to delete the phrase. It would take two or three or four months, so they they might want to make the decision to refer out. So since the board doesn't decide to take the phrase out, the board has to ask the five to take the phrase out. So several of the five are saying it's going to take several months, so that, that could be why <clears throat> you aren't going to see this in March. And, and they haven't decided yet. They're going to decide next Wednesday. So if any, number, any any one of the five doesn't agree, it doesn't happen. Is that correct? Correct. Nice. Okay. Scott? Yeah. And so if nothing happens, then we're back to what Rick had mentioned. Whatever we get over those two years is what they get, and that's the best they can get out of us. I like that idea. The, the problem is that there's this perception and a commitment that the PPRTA has made. <laughs> Well, I understand that, and that's up to those five bodies to figure out if that's where they want to go or not. But if nothing's changed, then whatever we get in those two years is what they get, and that's it. And we're really not going back on our word because it's we said on the ballot it's up to ten million dollars. We didn't say ten million dollars. 
Yeah. And you see the look on the project manager's face when he does, you say, you're not giving me 10 million? <laughs> yeah. Do it by phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the same Carlos? Thing we had when we got told it's yeah, I know it's a, a tough, I know it's up to $10 million, but uh, we really, the reality is, I mean, think about it, what the, what's going to be the headline in the newspapers. Uh, we would be really the laughing stock if we don't, can't make that $10 million somehow, and I think, uh, Trying to extend the time frames would be the good a course of action, but to fall short of that uh, would just really put egg on our face. As a CDOT really does value the, the the partner agencies and the partner organizations here, and if we were not able to follow through, even though maybe the lawyers will tell you, you know, we don't owe you anything, that this would look really bad as an organization. We would be unreliable as far as meeting our commitments. So reliable as a CDOT when they tell us there's nothing yeah, about it. Oh. We the, the, the issue, the issue, of the tolls was, was by the way, was on the ballot as one of the opposition items. If it was in, in the remarks from the public or at least uh, comments, it was disclosed on the ballot itself as far as the many, the, the information. Many. So it, it was there. Maybe it wasn't a priority, but but it was disclosed. Scott, barely. Has the county committed to their fifteen million? I like the neon green. That's cool. Thank you. Jennifer Irvin, El Paso <laughs> County. Uh, we uh, have worked first on the IGA um, the between Federal Highway, or sorry, USDOT, El Paso County, and also um, um, uh, CDOT. Our next step is to work and consider on uh, the IGA between El Paso County and CDOT, and then my understanding is that Douglas County is also working with CDOT on theirs as well. So we have not completed those, but we are working towards that. Jim? Brian? Um, joking aside for a second, I, I do respect what Carlos said. Um, however, a lot of us here remember way back in 2003-2004 when this is all uh, coming together. The reason the RTA was created was because CDOT was taking our tax money and using it in Denver and not giving it back to us. So I, I'm dubious about CDOT's good intentions. Over the years, I've become dubious about many governments, um, more so than I used to be. In this particular case, we are going to make the effort, but it was pretty clear that this is going to be up to $10 million if we have the funds available. Um, and there was a two-year time period put in. Whoever put it in, I think, was really smart when they did that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think that's, you know, to go to go what uh, Scott said, I think, you know, we make the effort, and if we can't meet it, Kind of, it's kind of like you know. Well, you know, this is not this is not a maintenance of effort requirement. This is a we tried, we didn't. The money's not there. Sorry. Any other? Um, this isn't an action item for you today. This this was just an FYI because when you get your link to the board packet on item 11, uh, you'll you'll see an item on their their agenda that had not been on yours. Is it going to are they going to do it in an executive session or when are they going to have an open discussion session on this? They have to vote in open. Yeah, they have to vote in open and and there's an action item after the closed executive session. So Okay. But for both, next both, week. Yes, yeah, next okay. Wednesday both both are <coughs> towards the end of the agenda, but they always are courteous to uh, member government staffs to put executive sessions at the end. Normally, there's no action item after the executive session, but this time there will be. Okay. Okay. Any other updates on that one? Um, okay. The next item, Walmart update. Any, I don't think there are any. No news. news. No news on so that one. Still haven't heard from the Supreme Court if they're going to hear it or not. Okay. Um, item number nine. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, agenda topics for the next meeting. Are there any pressing issues anybody wants to have addressed? I can't think of Seeing none, 
Uh, any committee member communications that you would like to share with anyone? Seeing none, does anybody care if we adjourn? <laughs> Please adjourn.